Breath of the Wild 2 has new gameplay mechanics that drastically improve upon the gameplay of the first. One of the best feelings I had in Breath of the Wild was wandering around and discovering some new gameplay mechanic, like using a flame sword to heat myself before I had enough cold weather clothes, or pushing a button and accidentally surfing on my shield for the first time. Currently, Nintendo, like many other game companies, filed for patents for mechanics specific to its new upcoming game. And with this leaked trio of patents, players were given a glimpse into how gameplay Play was to evolve in Breath of the Wild's sequel, which also tells us theorists just exactly how this new world with this new sky, underworld, and surface areas may function together as a whole, as well as our ability to either traverse between these sections freely, at our own pace much like in the first game, or as completely separate sections closed off from one another. Starting with the first patent that can be simply labeled as Burrowing, this patent may hold the greatest answers for players eager to finding out how the new areas fit together and and interact with the surface world we experienced in the first game. And as seen in the first trailer, involve Link burrowing himself through the land masses in the sky from what seems to be the surface world below, most likely as a power given to him via his new arm. This patent first shows a player character simply standing on a lower platform as a dash line above them ascends upwards, with the angle between where the dash line hits and the platform above being labeled angle 1. That using our handy protractor seems to be right at 28 degrees. And above this, we see the words, condition satisfied, for this example being example A. In example B, however, we're given another angle, this time being at 61 degrees, with the words above reading, condition unsatisfied. And finally, in example C, we see the player having two dotted lines ascending skyward, showing that Link would be hitting two separate objects of differing heights. That once again reads, condition unsatisfied, meaning that Link is able to ascend upwards to any land masses as long as its slope is not past a specified degree of slantedness, that I'm gonna go out on a whim here and say 45 degrees. But more interestingly, I think this means that the majority of the sky islands in the game will be completely free to ascend to and explore at your own pace from anywhere on the ground below, as soon as Link is given this ability. And this also means that not only will we be able to paraglide down from any of these islands to any point on the surface as we choose, but as seen in another part of the first patent, Link can also descend from any of these sky islands to either a lower island or or to the surface below, as once again the object can't be too slanted and he can't pass through two objects to get there. The point in the game at which players will be granted access to the sky overworld and even the new underworld is unknown, but looking at the second trailer released by Nintendo, it seems that this could happen very early on in the game, as we see a shot of Link burying himself through an island from what appears to be the surface, as he shakes the dirt off of his head looking off into the distance as the camera, in a scripted moment, pans out Word, revealing the rest of the new world. A moment very similar to the iconic opening that Breath of the Wild gave its players after its opening sequence where the open world of Hyrule was first revealed. And going off of the first trailer where we see, at what is most likely the game's opening sequence, Ganondorf finally becomes released from his imprisonment by the mysterious arm that then attaches itself to Link as Hyrule Castle and parts of the surrounding landmass float off into the air. It's not crazy to think that the Zelda team would grant Link the ability to traverse from the surface into the new sky islands from right off the bat, not only giving players the new content to explore that they've been hyped up on, but possibly making it consistent with Breath of the Wild's premise that you can go and do anything you want in the map right away, while even skipping other parts of the game, and also allowing us to take on Ganondorf in the floating Hyrule Castle as soon or as late as we want to. It's also possible that this burrow ability will allow Link to quickly go from the surface to various parts of the underworld that that's been teeming below Hyrule, as well as between the many layers it may contain. I for one would love to see a still functioning Zonai City down there for us to explore, as well as the other exciting changes that are coming to Zelda's cities and open world map that I go over in this video. The Zelda team has continued to seemingly make changes and improvements upon its Sheikah Slate mechanics, adding in brand new abilities to Link's strange new arm that seems to have replaced the Sheikah Slate, patenting new abilities such as one labeled Rewind that can simply be described described as a return movement for objects that will have a massive impact on the game's upcoming puzzles and dungeons. Looking at the patent, we see the player character standing among various objects labeled OBJM1, 2, 3, and OBJF1 and 2, with the JM possibly standing for just moving and JF for just frozen, while C stands for camera, P1 stands for position 1, with T standing for the time it takes to rewind the object a certain distance back. We can also see in the patent that 
Link appears to have an energy gauge associated with his rewind ability, possibly affecting just how far back in time he can move an object after he targets it with the camera. After being targeted with the camera, we can then see that the object is able to rewind by exactly four positions, labeled P1, P2, P3, and PE, standing for position end. And it's this detail that will have huge impacts on the type of dungeons and puzzles that we encounter, as Link could encounter a dungeon in the underworld that requires him to rewind specific objects back a specified amount of time and positions to clear the puzzle. He may have to rewind multiple objects back to various locations and switch back and forth between them by freezing one with an ability similar to the Sheikah Slate Stasis ability while he rewinds another. We could also see an upgrade system in the game similar to Breath of the Wilds, where Link is able to exchange certain materials or complete certain tasks to upgrade the amount of time energy he has for rewinding objects, as well as the number of positions he can rewind objects by, making it more lethal against enemies, able to clear puzzles easier, and could even be a requirement for making it past certain areas in the game that require a longer rewind. He could also upgrade the arm to even rewind the various monsters he encounters, just as the stasis ability went from only affecting objects to enemies. But one of the most interesting changes coming to Breath of the Wild's sequel is its new aerial combat that allows Link to skydive and draw items such as his bow to use to fight enemies or even complete various puzzles. The patent that Nintendo filed for its unique aerial combat is one that shows Link being able to leap off of a platform like the Sky Islands and rocket downward while fully inverted and being able to draw his bow. Link seemingly can also change his orientation in the air to aim at different enemies and objects that he might encounter, being able to face at a 45 degree angle or become completely upright. But it's most likely going to be way more than that. When looking at flight mechanics, you might hear the terms pitch, yaw, and roll. Pitch refers to the number of degrees by which an object is verted or inverted, with 180 degrees being fully inverted. Yaw refers to the side-to-side -side movement of an object, while roll refers to if the object is twisting in the air. It's safe to say that Nintendo has developed a system that most likely allows Link to change his pitch and yaw to any direction he chooses, and even possibly his roll, so he can target various enemies and possibly have to use this game mechanic to complete further dungeons, or simply rocket down from the heavens to annihilate his surface enemies. I look forward to using bomb arrows to straight up carpet bomb whatever may be unfortunate enough to catch my gaze. It's likely that this unique game mechanic will be used to create lots of unique gameplay in the sequel, with Link having to freefall alongside various winged enemies and even flying Sheikah technology. We could even see some sort of updraft system or unique ability come into play to allow players to stay in the skies, an ability that may have to be used to further explore and complete sky dungeons. It would be interesting to see if Link could also be given some sort of flying mount, whether it be a member of the loft wings that are still soaring in the skies, or something based off of the Sheikah technology that is sure to show up in the Sky Islands. If a loft wing did show up, and this game is set to be one of the darkest Zelda games yet, we could see Link and the people of Hyrule coming back full circle of Skyward Sword, with them having to either abandon their homes for new ones above the monster-infested world, or have their villages sent skyward in the first place. With the changes coming to Zelda's map, when brought together with interviews from the Zelda team about their vision for the game, and story footage we've seen so far, reveal more of what's happening in Zelda's latest story. With my excitement for the world this game is bringing only growing, as I rummage through the various patents and brand new mechanics that Nintendo's publishing under WIPO, as discussed in the video about the drastic changes coming to Hyrule's new world, Eiji Aonuma, when asked about his vision for Breath of the Wild's sequel, mentioned that this game is an opportunity to create the floating sky world that he unfortunately couldn't create in Skyward Sword. That seems to have really fallen short of his creative vision. This means that we will likely be stepping into a rather extensive sky overworld near the game's beginning that brings into play every element that Aonuma wanted in Skyward Sword, while at the same time keeping it consistent with the time period of Breath of the Wild. We could likely see various towns and villages existing alongside one another as they float around scattered in the sky, with the game's NPCs even traveling around the map through various means, while the towns and villages, either having existed there for thousands of years like Skyloft, or having been ripped out of the ground like Hyrule Castle, offer various quests and sell items alongside unique outfits to help Link in his journey to stop the resurrected Ganondorf. And with Aonuma returning to his vision for Skyward Sword, we may very well see the return of the Loftwings. That may function off of a similar, if not the same patented skydiving mechanic to control their pitch, yaw, and roll, giving them a much more unique feel to control. But 
if none of this was very interesting, then I saved a very intriguing piece of evidence for last. Since the Breath of the Wild 2 patents themselves were a leak, it means that there are certainly many more gameplay mechanics and features under the hood of this game, like one for underwater exploration that also uses the same pitch, yaw, and roll mechanic. In this video, I go over the various changes that may be coming to Zelda's surface, sky, and underworld regions.